Hello and welcome to Did You Know Gaming Extra. We know the majority of our audience are huge fans of anime, though we'd hasten to bet that it isn't strictly the world of Asian animation that makes their hearts a flutter. We're willing to assume that it's animation in general, and that many of you enjoy a smattering of typical Western cartoon action. In this episode, we'll be looking at games based on animated series, both Western and Eastern too. And what better way to start the trivia than by making our first fact a JoJo reference. One of Shonen Jump's more popular classics, Naruto, has had many video game adaptations. The PlayStation 2 fighting game, Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja 4, contains a subtle yet undeniable Jojo reference. When playing as Shikamaru Nara, if the player uses his Shadow Possession Jutsu, Shikamaru will force the player into Jonathan Joestar's iconic pose. Perhaps unsurprisingly, this isn't the only time a Naruto game has referenced another anime. In Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 2, when Naruto is about to finish off Pain with the Rasengan, Naruto can be seen with the image of the currently dead Jiraiya behind him, also performing Rasengan. This bears a strong resemblance to the Gohan and currently deceased Goku's father-son Kamehameha from Dragon Ball Z during the Cell games. Naruto also does the same thing in Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm 3 when he's wearing Goku's costume and performs his ultimate jutsu finish chants. Speaking of Dragon Ball, there's an interesting secret in one of the franchise's Game Boy Advance titles, Dragon Ball Z Boo's Fury. While the game focuses on the Boo portion of the Dragon Ball story, it was apparently set to include a non-canonical story from the Dragon Ball Z animated movies. Within the game's data, near Android 18 Scouter entry are unused Scouter entries for the villains of the series' seventh movie, Dragon Ball Z Super Android 13. Entries for Androids 13, 14, and 15 all read, an evil android created by Dr. Gero's computer. There is also an entry for Super Android 13 which reads, After absorbing the broken parts of androids number 14 and number 15, number 13 transformed into this super android. This inclusion seems to imply that the developers at Webfoot plan to include the storyline as some sort of side quest. And while we're on the subject of Boo's Fury, the game has a sly reference to some of the series' localization differences. When Goku gives a demonstration of Super Saiyan to Majin Boo and Babidi, Boo says, Super Saiyajin? This is a reference to the Japanese name and pronunciation of Saiyans, which is Saiyajin. Super Saiyajin! Another popular show with a beloved video game adaptation is Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. Pitched as a sort of Phoenix Wright for the world of animated icons, Harvey Birdman was developed for the PS2, PSP, and Wii by High Voltage Software and Ace Attorney's Capcom, and as such includes several references to Capcom's catalogue. Several members of the Street Fighter cast can be found throughout Harvey Birdman's legal journey, such as a moment in which he accidentally sets Guile's hairdo ablaze, and the appearance of a peacock on the front of a magazine, in reference to T-Hawk. Dalsim also appears when it's revealed that the legal office is going zen and removing its furniture. Zangief intimidates the lawyer after he claims that Dum Dum is scheming an evil plan, and Ryu's portrait can even be seen on a fake ID card belonging to Peanut with the name Nobuyuki Johnson. Chun Li also attends Harvey's retirement party as a guest, and lastly, copies of Street Fighter 3 are also mentioned, with an SNES version being destroyed by Avenger. It's also found on Harvey's computer and as an arcade machine. Cartoon Network, Adult Swim's nicer, child-friendly side, features a program that arguably brought the channel back into popularity, Adventure Time. The show had a total of 283 episodes, and viewership that hit up to 3 million viewers for some episodes. With numbers like those, it's unsurprising the show would have a few games attached to its name. The handheld title Adventure Time Hey Ice King Why'd You Steal Our Garbage, much like the show, is littered with references to the various games and pop culture that inspired it. As well as the game being influenced by Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link, with its overhead worldview and side-scrolling levels, it has another Zelda reference. If the player heads to the first dungeon without a sword, Jake will say, Hey man, it's dangerous to go alone. And then Finn will reply, What, we're both here? Jake then proceeds to say, Nah dude, what I mean is, this place is dangerous to enter without finding a sword first. I'm sure you'll find her soon. This is a direct reference to the classic phrase from the original Legend of Zelda, in which an old man will give Link his sword saying, It's dangerous to go alone, take this. This isn't the only reference to classic dialogue, as in the third dungeon, the Ice King will cut off a conversation with Finn saying, But enough talk, 
have at you. After this encounter, if the player examines the garbage princess, Jake will remark, a miserable little pile of trash. All of this references the first battle with Dracula in the prologue of Castlevania's Symphony of the Night, in which Dracula proclaims, What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! But enough talk! Have at you! Alternatively, Adventure Time Explore the Dungeon Because I Don't Know had something deemed not appropriate for the Europeans. When encountering the Flame Princess for the first time, she'll accuse Princess Bubblegum of capturing her, saying, You tried to destroy me, you tart! This attack was only fully present in the US version of the game, with Flame Princess being cut off by Lumpy Space Princess's next line in Europe, before she says tart. You tried to destroy me, you- Oh my god! Princess, you should slap Princess Bubblegum in the face! This is because the word tart is commonly used as slang for a promiscuous woman or prostitute in Britain. Next up, we're looking at Darkwing Duck. Capcom had made a Darkwing Duck adaptation for the NES back in the late 80s, garnering a favorable response and helping solidify the company's child-friendly cast of characters with a spot in the video game industry. However, there is some unfortunate news attached to Darkwing Duck. Headcanon, led by Simon Stealth Tomley, had attempted to bring the Darkwing Duck franchise back into the gaming limelight. After their success creating Sonic Mania, Stealth had an encounter with some members of Capcom during an E3 event. They expressed an interest in the idea of bringing the series back, which Stealth said he'd been wanting to create for some time already. With this info, Headcanon quickly worked to make a tech demo for a possible reboot of Darkwing Duck, going on to make a fully functioning concept demo for a single level. While they had initially seen interest from Capcom, it quickly began to disappear, as the company's communication passed from one member of staff to another, before responses dried up entirely. The company had spent a few months creating this demo, perhaps foolishly, considering the lack of contract or firm confirmation of interest by Disney execs, only to find that their work was for nothing. Tom Lee later said that he was told by a credible source that Disney wouldn't have been interested in the project at the time, so nothing would happen. Headcanon found itself in a tough spot and tried to shift gears on their work so that the efforts they'd put into the pitch weren't entirely in vain. This involved trying to change the game's aesthetic and characters to be based on an original IP known as Vertibreaker, with several new members of staff being brought in, including a friend of this channel to work as the game's lead artist, A Plus Start, and Matthew Weeks, one of the artists on the modern Sega Genesis title, Tanglewood. Sadly, after launching a Kickstarter campaign, the team wasn't able to gather enough funds to sustain themselves during a long development period, and as such, the project was cancelled. Tom Lee wouldn't be able to keep his head above water during development without proper funding, and his work on Sonic Mania was only based on development milestones rather than royalties based on its success. His financial situation wasn't as favourable as many would have you believe, leaving him without the necessary finances to support himself or his team for the game's development. And now it's time for this episode's random piece of trivia, and today we'll be taking a look at David Cage's interactive action adventure, Beyond Two Souls. In a bid to drum up some excitement around the release of their upcoming game, Quantic Dream sent out mock scripts of Beyond Two Souls to numerous video game media outlets as if the game's starring Oscar nominee Ellen Page wasn't enough. The scripts themselves were a monstrous 2,000 pages, almost all of which were entirely blank. Supposedly, this was representative of the size of the actual script for the game. Besides the cover, the only writing to be found is on the first page, which reads, the average film script is 100 pages. At 2,000 pages, this is not your average film script. Beyond Two Souls, the first exclusive PlayStation title to be officially selected for the Tribeca Film Festival. Along with these paper monuments, the developers sent out DVDs featuring one minute of Beyond's one and a half hour screening at Tribeca Film Festival. Did you also know that Sega's Alex Kidd franchise started out as a licensed Dragon Ball game? For more anime facts, why not check out our video on anime facts. <laughs> on anime game facts even. That's all for today. busy seducing beautiful women with my piano playing or worshipping my puppet face god, I'm streaming with my friends on the Digino Gaming Twitch channel. 
the illustrious Shane is also on Twitch at twitch.tv slash Shane Gill. Real original. <laughs> been playing any number of games. I recently played through Castlevania Symphony of the Night. We've also been playing some uh, Deep Rock Galactic, which is a what a fun, fun little indie game. So, if you got nothing to do, and if the puppet face god allows it, come on down.